Hey, do you need wallpaper? Go to wallpaperboulevard.com. Give them my name, tell them Spencer Colgan sent you, and they'll be sure to give you 10% off at checkout. Check it out, tell them I said hello. They have a tremendous selection. Don't shop anywhere else until you've checked out www.wallpaperboulevard.com. This is Spencer Colgan. Thank you for watching my show. I want to show you how I went about painting the little hallway I'm standing in. I figured I would show you up close. Maybe I can keep your attention throughout the video. I can tell you that with dark paint, which is still wet, such as this, it's a little more difficult than your typical light color paint. So. Please watch the whole video and see what went into making this, the beautiful outcome that you're looking at. Okay, with dark pigmented uh, paint, there's techniques that you have to use in order not to get uh, light spots in, in your walls and when you're applying the paint. So let's, let's uh, take a look and see how we did this. Okay, enjoy the video. When you're working with a light colored paint like this one and various other off-whites, if you get a little paint on the trim, you know what? Your eye doesn't see it from up here, does it? But if you get this color, which is what we're painting, Thank you very much. That's just dust. If you get this dark indigo blue color on this, even a little bit, you're gonna see it. So how do you keep your paint off of your trim? There are as many do-it-yourself painters out there as there are professionals who get paid to do it. I truly believe it because I communicate with them on YouTube often. And so I'm speaking to the homeowner who wants to do this right and is good at what he or she does. And when you're done, your work is going to be either like a pro or better than a pro. A lot of people who do professional work, they rush through it, they can do better and they cut corners and guess what? You want, that's one of the reasons why I, be, I became professional at what I do. Um, I've hired painters before, going back as far as the mid-90s, and um, I hired a painter. Well, I didn't hire the painter. Let's just say he was working in my house uh, while I was out working. And uh, <clears throat> he, um, he got trip marks all over my door, and I said, you got trip marks all over my door? He goes, I, I come back and fix uh, my glasses. I kid you not, I said... Don't come back. Don't come back. Don't come back. You see this? This is a hand masker. I'm going to mask this off with tape, which will spool off masking paper as well, so that not only is the trim covered, but it will shade or, or cover that, okay? Now, when you're a good DIYer or a pro, sometimes you have to hide other people's errors. Let me show you what I mean. If I put my tape right up against the point at which, at which the wall meets the trim, if I do that, guess what I'm gonna be doing? I'm gonna be covering the last painter's sloppy mistake. And when I paint my indigo blue, I'm going to reveal, come on, come on, focus. I'm going to reveal his gray paint. See, if I do it right, he freehanded this and you can see his choppy line there, but, I have to now go 
beyond his gray and put the tape so that when I put my indigo blue, I'm painting over his error. Okay? So I have to strategically install this tape in order to cover his gray mistake. So, with that in mind, I'm going to plant my, my tape with my finger, plant it in so it doesn't move, because I'm gonna be doing this. And I'm going to get my eyes down. Look, look how close I am. This is how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to just expose the white and expose his errors. When we criticize on this channel, we use male pronouns. Because it's usually guys, and you know it, who do this, this mistake. Okay. Now let me show you. Let me show you what I did. Oh, Spencer, you exposed the white. You're going to be painting indigo on the white. That's right. Because the last guy put gray where it didn't belong. And so we have to go beyond his mistake in order to cover it. And... The greatest manifestation of error is here. So my tape has to come beyond his error. Consequently, I have a white reveal here and along here. Because if I just cover his mistake here and go back up here, my indigo is going to have a sharp, crookedness to it which i don't want and so to avoid that problem i simply extend the tape in order to hide the error and make it straight or the illusion of straightness but you say to me spencer this sounds great but i've used this tape and it always gets under the tape my paint, and then I, I have problems with it, Spencer. That's not good. Is that you? Am I speaking to you? Are you one of the people to whom I'm speaking? Well, let me introduce you to caulk. This is clear caulk. And I'm going to clog the tape so that I can block the paint from getting under the tape. Because the tape is only as good as your trim and wall line. How many times have you seen gaps between the trim and the wall? All the time, like I do. Now we've clogged it. We've made the seam impermeable, which means when I paint with my professional brush, the paint will not get underneath it. Question on my YouTube channel. But Spencer, I read the directions. I like your videos, but I read the directions and it says, wait 30 days before you paint it. And I say to you, good for you. That's what you get for reading directions. I'll see you in 30 days. Okay? Good for you. We're going to paint this right away. We're going to paint it right away. And as soon as we paint it, we're going to pull the tape off while it's wet. Okay? And for those of you who are going to wait 30 days, make sure you take provisions because you're going to need food and water while you're waiting. Are you a pro? I'm going to suggest to you that you get new brushes every time you do a job. Is $17 gonna put you in the red? 
get new brushes because there's nothing like using a brand new brush. After you wash the brush and store it and it gets bent or if you even wrap it up and it's stored and the bristles, those filaments, which most people call bristles, get kind of out of whack and take the brush and use it as a dusting brush. Now, because we're going to be doing the ceiling, I'm going to use the angle sash brush rather than the three inch right angle. I call it a right angle because it's a 90 right there. That's a 90 degree. So this is a regular brush. Okay. And this is angled sash. Okay. So we're going to paint this right away. And we're going to wet the bristles or the filaments. Why is that? We wet the brush. So that the paint doesn't stick to the filaments or the bristles when you clean it. Okay. Now, when you come to a corner beyond which you're not painting, you have to employ another technique that is governed by the virtue of be careful. See? See how we end it? We lift up so that we don't get paint on the other side. Okay. So now, I'm gonna put two colors, uh, two, two layers, because we want a nice thick coat down there. And I'm gonna show you what I mean when I say, pull it off right away. Make sure you, your brush gets in there. Watch this, I'm pushing, I'm pushing. But I'm not pushing too hard because guess what? You can take the paint right off. Okay. Let's see my work. Take it right off. Okay. That's the end result. Now I want to show you another way to protect this side of the wall, okay? I'm going to use a 3 16 inch roller. My goal is to just get the color on the roller. Just get the color on it. You don't even see it, like, wet. That's the point. When you're dealing with a highly pigmented color, any lines that are not straight will be so highly visible to even the worst eyes. I don't even think I got too much on it right now. Okay, no problem. Even if we have too much, we can just discharge it right there. Okay? This is why you got to do multiple coats on dark colors. You see that? Or in some certain cases, like painting a red, you need to prime it with the right color, which would be gray. Okay. We want to gently introduce the roller to the corner. Oh, and I do mean gently. Now, if you're heavy handed, you don't like that line, you're going to press harder and you're going to get paint right on the other side. Gently. That's it right there. Put a happy little tree there. Give him a friend. He's not happy. Now, if you do what I'm asking you to do, you're going to be able to paint this like a pro. Okay? You can press hard here, but when you get to the corner, nice and easy. Look at that. Am I right or wrong? Don't 
Don't tilt your roller like this. Don't do that. Because you're gonna get paint on the other side. Have patience. And if you don't have the patience, Have a glass of Pinot Noir, N-O-I-R. You'll get a lot of patience. It'll just come to you. Now let's see how I did. You get the point? What do you think? Let's see it from the other side. Now, hold on. Don't go anywhere. A bunch of people just clicked off. Great. Thank you, Spencer. I mean, we're not done. We're not done. Because let's take a finer look. Do you see that? That's going to get covered on the next coat. Right in the middle of your screen. We're not done. Don't rush this. And don't try to stick your roller in the corner. Here's why. We have a pad, we have a, we're on bumpy, right? And so on the next go round, we're gonna introduce a little more paint. And the little more paint is going to go over what we painted and we're going to paint where we didn't get. And my goal is to do three coats. Okay, so for those who left, they missed it. They've already missed on how to do this right. Now let's talk about another issue. Um, the drippings and the splatter. I wanna show you what we need to keep in mind, okay? So I didn't go up to the edge. You know how we're gonna do that from the last frame. But now, this isn't caulked yet. How long do you wanna keep your caulking on this before you paint it? How long is it gonna last? Well, I can tell you if you leave it any more than a half an hour, in a dry environment, you're going to be pulling it off like bubble gum. But it may last an hour, but I wouldn't leave it any more than 30 minutes. So I'm not putting it on yet. So I could roll this out, but I'm gonna get little splatters. With this color, you'll notice it all over the white woodwork if you don't cover it. So using one of the best paint rollers on the market. No, I don't get any money from these people, but I have to tell you, it's one of the few products I'll endorse on my channel. This is superior, superior stuff, okay? Okay, so now this is not how we paint the last coat. I'm going up and down here, okay? I'm just going to bring it down within two inches of the bottom and I'm not touching my tape on the bottom. Now let's, let me show you. Remember I showed you this corner over here? Let's, let me show you what would happen if you made the imprudent decision to use a roller on the corner. Now some do-it-yourselfers will say, yeah, that's good enough. Come on. You, you can't do that, okay? You need, you need a specialty tool, okay? So now this is caulked. I have caulk here. In other words, this tape is sealed. So I, I, I'm on a timeline here. So I'm going to gently bring my roller up against here, okay? And it's also caulked at the bottom. Now, even though it's caulked, I don't, I don't, I'm not too aggressive with it, okay? Gently bring that brush in there. Gentle. Put a tree in there. I don't know, I think my tape failed here. Look, right in this corner. We'll find out soon enough. 
But if it does, you need white paint, which I don't have. Okay. When you're using these dark colors, you have to wait till each coat dries in order to put the second one on. Because what happens is you'll reactivate the wetness in it and it'll pull the color off. You'll be there all day. Let it dry completely. For these corners, you see this is an obtuse corner, an obtuse angle. The brush is too aggressive. If you get one of the bristles trying to shove its way under the caulk, it may penetrate it because the caulk is wet. So we gently introduce the wet roller. Okay. Okay, let's see. See, I'm going gentle, okay? It doesn't mean the paint is going to get underneath there. But what I'm doing is I'd rather have this action than a bristle. Ch -ch -ch. You understand. Okay. Can I just reiterate something, please? In case you're skipping around on the video, this is not something you want to rush. Okay? In fact, it's not a video you want to skip through either because if you're skipping through, if you're doing a similar project with a similar color, you want to hear the advice. Don't, don't paint this wet. You got to wait till it dries. You know, if you miss that advice, you may not get the full benefit of the video. Okay. You get the point why I'm using the roller there. Okay. Now I'm going to wait until I get multiple coats on this before I remove this. Okay. Because no sense in taping it up again. It's a lot of work. Now, same thing over here. This is an inside obtuse angle. And we want to be gentle in that corner. Because if we push too hard with a brush, we might find that we didn't do our best. And we might find that we have paint. What are you going to do if you get paint under this tape? You know, you're in for it. You're in for a quick cleanup job. And then here's the deal. If you're trying to clean wallpaper off, here's what's going to happen. You're going to embed the pigment of this paint right into the wall covering. Or you're going to rub so hard, you're going to, you're going to move, remove the pigment of the wall covering. Now, when we get to the top, that's when we want to use our brush. If you've never done it, take the brush, start, start two inches below and Move the brush, not your wrist, but the brush. Let the brush do the work so that you fill in all the nooks and crannies. Now we're up close. You can see the gray on the ceiling, right? As we did before, we're going to cover the arrow and pull it slowly while covering the other painter's mistake. I would say don't go back and forth near there. Let it dry. You can straighten up your line later. Okay, where are we at? Let me clean off the lens. We don't want to jam the roller into the sides, right? We don't want to disrupt our paper, perhaps breach the seal that we've made with our caulk. So now we have to get those corners with a brush. In this case, we have no choice but to be a little more aggressive with our applicator, the brush. Also, our caulk has not dried, but it's gotten a lot harder and can tolerate the pressure from this brush, pushing the paint up against it, right? We can expect a little more protection here. 
And here's a little trick. On the second coat, filling in these areas, you know, these, these areas where the tape is attached, what we do is, look how thick I'm putting that paint on. You think I'm going to have to give that a third coat there? No way. But if I pull it too much, look what would happen on my second coat. Watch this. On the flat surface, almost perfection. But let's see how the friction and the pulling does in the corner. Take note of that missing paint there. Watch this. Got to redo there. Got to redo there. But when you just put it on thick and you pull it onto these masked areas. Oh. One direction, one direction. Okay. One direction, look, this way. You're not causing too much friction on the product. Man, my tape came off down there. Oh. Okay. We've brushed all of our corners with heavy with a heavy layer of paint. And now in one direction I'm doing my roller. I'm not going in two because the roller will pull the paint off of the wall and you'll have to do another coat, then another coat. One direction with this, with these dark colors. Let me show you what happens on a second coat. Ask, ask yourself, do I need a third coat? Watch this. In the center of your screen, you see the blue? Can't see it from here, can you? See it? What's making that is the fabric and the roller pulling off the wall as I roll back and forth. That's why you need a third coat. See? See the blue under it? Now let's see if it changes if I go in one direction. And, and I'm not, I'm saying give it a third coat, but let's just see. Yep, see right in the center of your screen? So just with the roller doing this, watch. You see the action as it's pulling up? It's putting the paint down. This side's putting it down and this side's pulling it up. And with these dark pigmented colors, you need three coats. When you get more comfortable with the roller, see what I'm doing here with my thumb? Putting a little more pressure on the right because I got valleys here. What is that? The texture is manifesting valleys right here. So in order to get my roller into these nooks and crannies, I have to either roll in a different direction or put a little more pressure on that side of the roller to get it in there, or else I'll be here all day. So right now, I'm tweaking my wrist toward the right. I'm doing this, you can't see it, but the pressure is on this part, and I'm watching my progress so that I don't overdo the pressure. 
because my wall is not cooperating with me right now. Okay? My final coat will not be like this, up and down. It'll be like this. After you give this your last coat, While this is wet, we're gonna roll the paint here. Look. Now, watch what we're doing. I'm, I'm just getting the paint on. I know I said go in one direction. Here's what we're gonna do. Watch this. And I'm going to come as close to that edge as I can without going over it. Why? Because we're painters and we're perfectionists. There's a lot of light in this doorway. Guess what's going to happen if we do this wrong? You're going to see the different layers. I didn't lift the, the roller yet. I'm going behind my head. Okay. Nice. Now, you come in this doorway. That's what you want to see. You want to see one applicator, not two. Okay. And that's what you're going to see when this is dry. Oh, let's put some more paint on it. You see that? No good. Okay, let's do this right. I put you over there because what I just did on the last frame wasn't good enough. My roller's dripping wet, practically. In one stroke, we're going to go from the bottom all the way up and all the way down. I'm starting in the middle because I want the paint in this arch. I'm gonna go in the other direction just to get the paint onto the surface. I'm not interrupting the flow or the movement of the roller, I'm continuing all the way through. Okay, this is what we do with dark pigment. If it were a flat, you could get away with stopping the roller, not here. And which we have a lot of light reflecting this whole thing. If we're sitting on the couch over here, you look up, you're gonna see if your roller went in a different direction or if it stopped. Please, trust me on this. Here's our final stroke. I already have enough paint on it from what I just did, but I loaded it up again so that we can put the final application on. Joining all of the layers together so that there's no distinction between the edge and three quarters from the edge. You know what I mean? Okay, let's go. I started at the bottom, I'm going, at, I'm going upwards. Careful to avoid a half an inch from that edge. Equal pressure, equal speed, all the way up into the arch. Coming down now. Stay away from the edge. I didn't stop. No one's going to be able to see anything but one universal application. Now, did I cover the whole width? No. I'm going to load up again. And I'm going to overlap my last application by at least 30%, preferably 50. I'm gonna start at the same point at which I started the first. Same speed, same pressure, and then we're done. I wanna knock off the paint in the middle. Too much to start it at the bottom. You might get dripping. I'm at the bottom, same pressure. I'm going a little faster, because guess what? 
I don't have to be so careful on this edge. The other side is blue. Nice. Nice. All the way down. Let me bring you in and show you this beauty. Okay, here's my finish. Here's the proof of the pudding. Here's the light. Here's the proof. Don't take my word for it. Can you see any interruptions in the flow of that roller applying the paint? No. Can you see lap marks, meaning the edge of the roller and then the other edge where I began it again? No. Why is that? Because I put the same amount of paint on. First of all, I put one coat, first of all. Remember when I went, I'm not talking about layers. We got four coats on, on this thing now. What I mean is when I first did it on the last frame, I put, and then I started halfway here, overlapped it. The reason why you can't see those lap marks is because all of the paint has self-leveled. And that's what you want. Look at that beautiful thing. Look at that. I just put my third coat right there. And now, you see? You see how the brush pulls, right? Let's try to get this done right now. Come on. Oh. My plastic roller's hitting the corner. It's gonna pull off the paint. I can hear it. It's a pain doing this. It's a pain. We can fix that with a brush. Why are you whispering, Spencer? I don't know. I don't know why I am. I don't know. Because it's a nail biter. See how the brush is? You wanna, you wanna burn it, right? It pulls the paint off. Look, look at this, you wanna get done. And it keeps pulling it off. So you gotta wait till that dries and do it again and again. Okay, let's pull this paper, masking paper off. Why don't we, okay? Nice and slow. Doesn't this look gorgeous? I mean, just the color combo. And then, of course, the technique. Look at the crisp line, look at that. It's all in the tools, it's not, it's not the painter, it's the tools. Look at the beautiful cut line, look at that. Oh, man, I just love it. Now, what about that wallpaper, huh? <laughs> you know who hung it, right? <laughs> Thank you. This is all shelving going in here. But look at this, look at this. Look at that perfection. Still drying, let it dry. That's all you're seeing is wet paint, okay? Trust me, it's wet. I don't wanna to touch it to prove it. Look at that beauty, look. 